Hi friends of cocktails! Today will be one of those episodes where we take a classic cocktail and switch up the base spirit. I'll show you how to make some homemade ingredients. We'll use specialty food ingredient and then we'll make a delicious cocktail. In three words, it's cocktail time. the piña colada, a de facto summer cocktail, which has already been made by several of my YouTube friends, with many different techniques and recipes. I'll leave links to their channels in the description below. I'll make a version that's more an all-year piña colada, with scotch and no coconut. But you won't even know it's missing. I know this because I used this cocktail in a cocktail competition, and the judges couldn't believe there's no coconut in it. I finished second, so I tweaked the recipe just a bit. Here are the ingredients. To sop the rum, I'll use 13-year-old scotch Chivas Regal Extra. This has been selectively matured in cherry casks, which adds extra layers of rich and intense flavor and aroma. We'll play on the sherry notes in the recipe. Horchata is a plant milk drink that is often described as a sweet rice milk beverage. It's most popular in Mexico, where it's usually flavored with cinnamon and vanilla. Today it will replace the coconut in this fake piña colada. This is the biggest tweak in the recipe. I originally used lime juice, but the vinegar in the shrub adds complexity to the sour component of the cocktail and it works great. We'll make two things from the pineapple, fresh pineapple juice and pineapple fruit leather from the leftover pulp. That will be the garnish for the cocktail. Xanthan gum is an optional ingredient. It will make sure the texture and flavor of our cocktail stay the same for longer, without the cocktail separating into layers too fast. If you have it, use it. If you don't, just drink faster. These aren't all the ingredients. We'll also add a bit more sweetness and play on the sherry notes of the chivas. So wait for the full recipe. As with any cocktail recipes, you can use this as a guideline and make your own twists. You can use a store-bought horchata if you can get one, or use lime juice instead of lime shrub, like I did in the original recipe. Or use this video and learn how to make awesome homemade ingredients, like this delicious horchata or pineapple fruit leather. Let's put the apron on and make them. I'll start by saying I haven't tried any other horchata than the one I've made, but I love this recipe. For the homemade horchata, I'll start by weighing and rinsing 200 grams of long grain rice. Rinsing it washes away some of the starch from the surface. I'll then place it in a bowl and cover it with 750 ml of water and let it soak overnight, making it soft and easier to blend. I'll also soak 75 grams of almonds and 0.75 grams of Ceylon cinnamon. If you can crush cinnamon with your fingers, you know it's the Ceylon kind. Make sure all the almonds are covered with water, then add a pinch of salt. Give everything a quick stir and it's ready to soak overnight. The rice water goes in the fridge and the almonds can stay at room temperature. After 12 hours, we're ready for the next steps. We'll drain the almonds, since the water is full of tannins from the almonds and cinnamon. Give the water a tiny taste to see what I mean. Add the almonds to a blender, followed by all of the rice and the water it was soaked in. To speed up this process, you could probably use almond and rice milk. If that's sacrilegious in horchata making, por favor, perdoname. For the added flavors and sweetness that's needed in the horchata, I'll add 0.6 grams of a vanilla bean and 150 grams of sweetened condensed milk. You can of course play with the flavors you like at this part. You could even add pumpkin spice as we get closer to Halloween. Then blend everything to get it well incorporated, blending for at least one minute. Then comes the long process of straining. And if you're wondering about my ultra super professional mixology equipment, I'm using an upside down holder from a sous vide, a funnel strainer for making big batches of pasta, a muslin cloth that was meant for baby care, and a fine mesh strainer with a broken off handle. If you don't have this, you can use a nut milk bag or strain it twice through a fine mesh strainer, the second time using a muslin cloth as well, and you should be good. Have patience with the straining, because the starch from the rice really clogs up the strainers. After it's mostly filtered, I'll just give it an additional squeeze to get out the last part of the liquid that's trapped in the filter. The bowl will have some more starch left on the bottom, so don't mix up the horchata before you bottle it. 
store it in the fridge and use it within a couple of days. Since I'm not sure about traditional Mexican horchata recipes, I'd love to hear your recipe if you're making it at home. On to the next ingredient, the clarified lime shrub. I'll start by peeling organic limes, removing the white pith and juicing the limes. I'll need 8 grams of lime peels and add that to the blender. To make it a balanced shrub, we'll add sugar, vinegar and lime juice, 105 grams of sugar, followed by 150 ml of apple vinegar. This is a great choice since both apples and limes contain malic acid. So the final ingredient is of course the lime juice, 90 ml. Give it a good spin in the blender to break down the lime peels and incorporate everything. Then comes another straining. This time it's a bit faster. When the shrub is filtered, it's ready to be bottled and used in cocktails. But in true cocktail time fashion, I clarified the shrub with agar agar using the same process I showed in the clear mojito episode. This way I can use the shrub in clear cocktails as well. To make the fresh pineapple juice and fruit leather, I'll start by removing the skin and chopping the flesh of half a pineapple. You can use the leaves as garnish, but we're not doing that today, so I'll put them in the freezer and the skins to make tapache or oleosaccharum. Click the link to see how I use that for the pineapple cordial. Then juice the pineapple, separating the juice from the pulp. If you don't have a juicer, you can try blending the pineapple, then straining the juice. Bottle the fresh pineapple juice, place it in the fridge and let's start making the fruit leather. For that we'll use the leftover pineapple pulp which I'll first mix with sugar. Weight the pulp, so you can add the right amount of sugar, one third the weight of the pulp. If your pineapple is super sweet, add a bit less. To melt the sugar, I'll place on low heat and mix until fully dissolved. Once the sugar dissolves, I'll add half a teaspoon of matcha green tea powder. Adding it through a fine strainer prevents clumps from forming and the green color will make the fruit leather on the top of the glass resemble the color of pineapple leaves. Once it's well mixed, we're ready to spread the pineapple puree on a parchment paper, ready for the dehydrator. Make sure to spread it out evenly and thinly to get the best results. This will then run on 65 degrees Celsius or 150 Fahrenheit for about 8 hours. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can dehydrate it in the oven, set to the lowest temperature. Instead of waiting, we'll just use the swap in I made yesterday. As for the shapes, you can cut this up any way you want. We use triangles for the club clover cocktail, I'll cut circles for this one. And cutting with a parchment paper makes for easier storage and handling. Fruit leather is a great snack for kids as well and should be good for quite some time if stored in an airtight container. Let me know in the comments if you'll try this with any other fruit. One extra ingredient that will pair nicely with chivas and lift up the whole cocktail is fino sherry. As you may have noticed, I love using cherries in my creations. Before you start making the cocktail, make sure that all the ingredients we made are cold enough because we'll measure the amount of ice we use. Now let's make the scotch, sherry, horchata, lime shrub, pina colada with pineapple fruit leather. You could make the cocktail shaken, but using a blender will result in a creamier and silkier drink. I'll start with scotch, 52 and a half mils or one and three quarters of an ounce of Chivas Extra. Even though this was selectively matured in Oloroso sherry casks, I decided to use Fino sherry for this recipe. 15 ml or half an ounce of Tio Pepe Fino Sherry. Next, 52 and a half ml or 1 and 3 quarters of an ounce of our homemade corchata. This can of course be enjoyed on its own, over ice, for a refreshing drink on a hot day. Pina colada literally means strained pineapple, so we can't forget about pineapple juice. 45 ml or 1 and a half ounce. A bar spoon of gum syrup will add just the right amount of sweetness. Check out the basic syrups episode to see how to make it or use a 2 to 1 rich syrup. And for the sour sour component, 50 ml or half an ounce of lime shrub. I'm adding this almost last, since I don't want the acids to curdle horchata before blending. And that's also the reason I'm adding 0.4 grams of xanthan gum. If you'll make this as a shaken cocktail, it's probably better to skip xanthan, since it might be harder for it to fully dissolve. And lastly, ice. This time we are measuring the amount of ice we add, since it will melt completely. This way we can control the amount of dilution, while still making sure the cocktail is sufficiently chilled. Leave the blender running until all the ice melts and you can see a nice froth forming. I'll serve this in a cup that just caught my eye for this drink. 
The foam and the fruit leather garnish on top will look great in this cup. As for the garnish, I'll leave this for a future project and just go with a circle. Perfect. After a long episode, it's finally time to take a sip. Cheers! The creamy and foamy presentation with pineapple on the nose easily fools the senses to make you think this is a classic pina colada. But instead of the sweet pineapple and coconut flavor bump, I first get nutty notes with cinnamon and subtle vanilla from the horchata. With pineapple, lemon shrub and a dry sherry, all adding layers to this unusual version of the classic. The shrub of course makes the sour component more complex and it's almost surprising how well the whiskey stands up to all of the flavors. The fruity aftertaste with gentle spices will keep you coming back for more sips. And like I said, if you're not sitting under a palm tree, you won't miss the coconut in this drink. So, if you like pina coladas, you love this. Thank you if you made it to the end. And please let me know if you like seeing the homemade ingredients for signature cocktails. And when you try any of them, please let me know how they turned out. Until next cocktail time. Cheers. If you like pina coladas, Thank <laughs> you.